welcome back to my channel and another episode of Buzzed In. Buzzed In is a little series I have on my channel, mostly here in New York as well as sometimes globally, where I love to highlight the space, the decor, the local area, sometimes even a little history and culture. And today I'm really excited because we're heading to Dumbo. I actually filmed this episode so many months ago, like basically, I think before last summer, that I lost certain footage a little while ago and then had to refilm it and then I was traveling. And I've only just now finally gotten to posting this video. We're gonna be visiting Lale today. She lives in this beautiful one bedroom apartment in Dumbo. She actually reached out to me via email and asked if I wanted to see her apartment and it is stunning. So I thought it'd be a great place to highlight. She also runs this account called Normal.NYC where she showcases different interior design inspiration in these beautiful spaces. So she knows her stuff. Before we head on over, let's talk a little bit about the history of Dumbo. So Dumbo actually stands for Down Under Manhattan Bridge Overpass, which I did not know until recently. Back in the 1830s, it became a really popular area for industrialists and entrepreneurs because of its access to the East River, which basically connects it to all these other parts of the city. It quickly became an area where a bunch of factories and warehouses were built. So it existed as this industrial hub throughout the 19th and 20th century. And then around the 1920s or so, there was a lot of de-industrialization kind of following the Great Depression. So there was a wave of a lot of these factories shutting down. So the area became a bit more stagnant. It continued to kind of be that way. It was an area with immigrants. There was a big artist scene there, especially in like the 70s and 80s. And then in the 90s or so, there was this one real estate company that was kind of the one that like went and bought a bunch of real estate, developed it and made it into the very expensive neighborhood that it is today. Now when you visit Dumbo, you can see lots of beautiful restaurants, coffee shops, stores. It's a really popular and expensive place to live. So it's definitely a very desirable neighborhood that obviously has undergone a lot of change as a lot of New York City has. I'm not gonna get too much into it, but there's a little brief overview of Dumbo. All right, one other thing before we head over to Lale's, a quick read from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Pear, which is incredible, high quality, affordable eyewear company. I don't wear prescription glasses, but I love working with blue light glasses. I'm on my computer basically every day for many, many hours. So what's great about Pear is that they're super customizable. Um, so like I said, I got my blue light glasses right here. Hello. They have these little magnetic clip-ons so you can mix and match your glasses however you want. Like, hello, just snapped on some little red lenses. They have over 650 of these unique top frames for only $25, which is incredible if you want to mix it up, as well as 10 base frames for only $60. And they have sun tops too, if you make it into little sunglasses for $30. They have free shipping as well to the US and Canada. I'm gonna check out some high quality glasses at an affordable price range. You can check the link down below. I will be wearing these as I now edit this video. <laughs> so now without further ado, let's head over to Dumbo and go see Lala. My name is Lale and welcome to my one bedroom Dumbo apartment tour. Welcome in. This is my one bedroom apartment in Dumbo, Brooklyn. My rent is 4K. This is a very big open space layout and you walk in and you see my kitchen. I have a big kitchen island where I cook every day. I do everything here. I kind of sometimes use it as like a, a little office desk even. I put my laptop and I work here a lot. I'm Turkish, so food kind of runs in my blood and I do love cooking a lot. I got my favorite Turkish cookbooks there. The kitchen space is very perfect for one person. I have a washer and I'm grateful for that in New York. But the real deal of my apartment, every home photo that I post on my feed and on my own YouTube as well happens in here. This is my magical space. And 
And the first thing that I want to start off talking about is this major restoration hardware gold gilded mirror. One thing that I should mention about my apartment is that once you walk into this part of the first thing when people walk in here, they're like, what is this? Like, how did you get this inside here? It was quite a hassle, but we made it happen. Right next to it is my restoration hardware cloud couch. It was already a dream piece for me for a long time. On top of my couch is actually one of the most special pieces I have in this home. It's an art piece by Alexander Kowalski that was commissioned for me. Also the first piece that I got for this home as like an art piece, a decor piece. Lale means tulip in Turkish. So the L is of course Lale, but the tulip is referring to my name. The whole home has this more of like a natural vibe going on, very toned down colors. I really don't like pop off a color for big furniture. So this art piece as like a pop art piece um, gives me that effect. In Dumbo on the weekends, on Sundays, we have a flea market. This was actually from a vendor in that flea market. I got this last year for like 20 box a Sunday and I literally carried like a block to my home and it worked perfectly. This chair, it's Vasily chair by Marcel Bruyer. It's a vintage chair. I got this from Friends of Form, one of my favorite vintage furniture finders in the city. This is an original one from I believe 80s. It was actually the first piece that I got for this home. Right next to it on the floor is a magazine rack from Licken NYC, which is again a vintage furniture shop. Also feel like the minute I saw this, I felt it was the same exact energy that I just mentioned with the chair. This magazine rack, it's made out of used car belts. And I have a couple of my favorite books and magazines there. This is my little nook area. And I also needed a desk space because it was a pandemic and we were still working from home. So I got this desk literally as if it was made for here from Urban Outfitters. This is a art piece by a street vendor in Soho. He is there like every weekend. It's called Vintage Barbie and Ken. Moving on to my chairs. But I got these initially as a, these are from France and Son. They're the replication of the famous Genere chairs, Pierre Genere chairs. It kind of works perfect because I can turn it around there and it's the same quality with the desks and it serves me as a desk chair. And my mom's beautiful photo, my favorite photo of hers. She's actually my age in this photo and she's definitely one of my closest people in life living alone and away with the family I kind of want their energy around me all the time so her beautiful picture is up here so moving on to my coffee table the coffee table is also from restoration hardware it's their live edge oak coffee table it's a very very sturdy piece these are made by my best friend Camila and her brand Numic she is literally a neighbor living across the street like I can see her apartment through my windows this is from home union in Williamsburg it's a vintage side table from the 80s again this ways and the whole flower setup is from Rose Crans in West Village one of my favorite plant shops so I got this art piece from CB2 when I actually got it and then came home to put it up what I realized is that the brush strokes and the quality of the texture here is exactly the same with my columns so this is kind of like referring to the columns here when I saw this chair in Raini home which is a black owned small business a female owned small business in Brooklyn they make like handmade chairs side tables dining tables beautiful furniture this is almost a art piece for me it is not a chair it's not the chair you sit on lounge it's the chair you admire and you look at but it's just beautiful moving on to this little hallway that connects my bedroom to my bathroom. This rug is from Cold Picnic, a rug company again here based in New York. I kind of want to take you guys to my bedroom next. I really think that because this is a space where you wake up and you start your day, it needs to be very calm and serene and peaceful, whatever peace is for you. I love waking up to sunlight. I love waking up early in the morning. I'm a very big morning person. And the Restoration Hardware Cloud Bed was one of the first dream items that I purchased for this home. I wanted to place the bed like against the windows to have this windows as almost like a second headboard. Every night when I come back home and I can lay here, it's my happy moment throughout the day. I kind of have a big closet space here. I'm like switching seasons. I don't want to show like the whole thing behind me, but it's perfect for someone who works in fashion and someone who has a lot of clothing. I'm becoming more and more intentional over time and getting rid of a lot of things in my home. Last thing that I want to show you guys is my bathroom. 
It's literally a very bright bathroom. I love my selfie mirror. It literally gives me the whole great energy to do my makeup here. Again, I've become much more minimal and sustainable in makeup. I only have the things that I use like here and there on top of my counters. Favorite thing about the bathroom is the bath mats that I also got from Cold Picnic. I think that's kind of it for my apartment. I work as a fashion designer within my family business and I run a women's wear brand with them. However, for the past year during the pandemic, I got very interested into interior design and I do believe that fashion and interior easily merge in together. So when I moved into this apartment and I started decorating it and then I started sharing it on my IG, it became much more popular and I created a whole other account called Normal NYC where I daily share a mood board for interior. It became this big community over the one and a half years that I start doing interior consultation for other people, find them vintage furniture. So I source them and I help people decorate their own homes. I do believe that interior design, as a lot of people would say, is a never-ending process. As you grow, as you mature in your own style, your home changes with you. I can say that my own style has become very natural, very mature. I cannot say I'm a big minimalist or eclectic person, but I do love to have a lot of vintage furniture around me that can remind me of some sort of emotion. For example, I have a lot of family stuff in this home as well that I brought from Turkey. That reminds me of my parents, of my family presence around me. As a Turkish neighborhood lifestyle and having good connections with your neighbors are very much deeply embedded in my culture and here in New York as a foreign person it took me a while to be able to say that this city is my home even though I was always very much dreaming about being here the thing about Dumbo that really made me feel home is that everyone knows everyone here it's a very actually small boutique neighborhood there are just a couple buildings that are not that big and we have like local markets we have flea markets every weekend little coffee shops even though it's a very twisty neighborhood, literally every day when you get out, you see people doing photo shoots and everything. People who are actually living here know each other. And that's something that I never came across in New York. And that makes me feel super home at Dumbo. The fact that it's located right next to the water and you can watch the sunset, you can watch the skyline every day as like your backyard gives me a sense of home as well. It kind of reminds me of my home back in Istanbul where I grew up. <laughs> I've been living in the States since my college. I studied in Boston. I moved to New York after college. Since I was literally a little baby, like almost five years old, I somehow had this very natural feeling of I'm gonna be one day living in New York. I was lucky enough to have a family who had business here that helped me to travel with them for their work. New York has always been a big dream, but the minute that I got inside here, the city has this kind of an energy where it literally hits you in the face and it teaches you anything you need to learn. I feel like once you move past your, you know, that first initial war with the city to settle down, once it truly becomes home, it's like no other place is good enough. I feel like in this city, no matter wherever you came from, no matter what your story was, you can truly, truly reinvent yourself. The narrator of your story becomes only yourself. It is definitely a city where you become more independent, but still learn how to create family and that sense of belonging within other people and even though it's a very big city I feel like it's a very small city when you create a friend group when you create your home here it truly becomes a magical place <laughs>